Hey everybody, today we're going to fix the XT60 connector issue on the Ender 3 by completely replacing the wires. This is different than we did in the last video because all we did was take out the XT60 connectors and replace them with those solder and shrink connectors. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. <laughs> So like I said, today we're actually going to be replacing the wires from the power supply all the way to the motherboard. It's much easier than it sounds, so stay with us. It's actually what's recommended from many people across the 3D printing world, including Tim from TH3D, who recently called me the nerdy Jesus looking guy. <laughs> stay with us and let's do it. So I went ahead and removed the filament before I started this process, so you won't see any filament here. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the power supply using these two bolts right there. So we're just going to grab our Allen wrench and go ahead and loosen it up. I'm not going to take that one all the way out yet because I don't want it to fall. And we're just going to go ahead and remove, hold the back here, and remove the power supply from the Ender 3. All right, so once the back two bolts are removed from the bottom of the power supply, you can go ahead and unplug your XT60 connectors, which will be right here. I'm using the same Ender 3 to do this as I used in the first video. So to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these two wires, just like that. So when you unplug your XT60 connectors, it'll be separate, your power supply will be separated just like that. Then you can go ahead and pull the bottom off slowly, and you can set it down just like this. So what we're gonna do next is actually, we're gonna work on uh, checking the ground on these. If you guys saw the TH3D live stream recently, you saw how bad the ground is on the stock Ender 3 power supply. The Pro, you have a Meanwell power supply, so you don't need to do this next step. But in our case, in the, in the standard Ender 3, you'll need to work and uh, double check the grounding. There is, uh, six screws here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go ahead and remove them at this time. So now I have all six screws taken out and I'm going to slowly lift the top and set it to the side here. Then what we want to do is, let me see if I can pull it into zoom here. There is a screw right down here and it's a Phillips head screw. And what TH3D said is that this right here is your grounding screw. So what you want to do is just take your screwdriver carefully and make sure that that grounding screw is tight. So we double check that screw, um, as you can see right here, and we made sure it was tight, and that's going to help us moving forward. Then we're going to do uh, just make sure there's no film anywhere around here. Um, when he checked a couple of them, he found uh, the plastic film. So make sure that's all pulled off. And then once that's ready, uh, you can actually go ahead and put your cover back on and put the screws back in, all six of them. We're going to do that now. Okay, now that our six screws are back in, our case is put back together, I made sure they're good and tight. And what I'm going to do now is set the power supply off to the side and we're gonna go to the printer. So once we got that done, we're gonna to move to the printer here. We're gonna remove one, two, and three. So there's a, a bolt here, here, and back here. And we're gonna take all three of those out and we're gonna do that now. So once you removed all three of those screws, what you're gonna do is carefully go ahead and lift this top plate off. And I say carefully because the fan is gonna be connected right there. Got to be careful, you don't want to pull those wires out. And you can go ahead and set it next to it. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and pull the wires to your fan out. That way um, it's separated there and you can set that to the side. So once you got the top popped open, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the power wires from the board. Where you find them is on the end of the board here and you'll see these two right here. So. They actually come in right here and they connect with these two. You'll need a flathead screwdriver. I just grabbed the one that came with a kit quick. And you're just gonna go ahead and uh, loosen those two screws in there. 
If I can get my hand out of the way, then you can see it. So go ahead and loosen those two screws. So the next thing I did was I laid down the Ender 3 on the extruder side of the uh, printer, just very carefully laid it down, and it kind of floats on that X end stop area. Then what we need to do is take off this bo bottom case because when I was going to replace these, I realized that they actually taped them into the wire loom here. And we want to get around that. We want to make sure we get these out clean and put our new ones in. So go ahead and take this screw out here. After you got this screw out, there's actually two in the front on the bottom of the uh, extrusion here. And we're gonna need to grab a Allen wrench and remove those as well. Once these two are removed here, let's go ahead and slide that back around. And we can actually pull very carefully and set down our motherboard just like that. So it's kind of hard to see, but your two power wires here, they go in through your black tape and then they tighten in to where we loosened them earlier, right? So if you carefully grab a hold of them very carefully and pull them very slowly, most of the time they'll actually slide right out of that tape. And that's what we're trying to do. Next, what we're gonna do is grab our silicone wire we talked about earlier, and we're gonna do this one at a time. You can actually bypass the tape if you want to, and that's fine. I prefer to go through it, so I'm just gonna slide it right through the center, just like that. And leave yourself extra, because we're gonna be stripping these, and we can always pull them back later. Take, that was the positive, now we're gonna take the negative and do the same thing. Just go ahead and push it through. So the next thing we're gonna do is grab our wire strippers here, and I'm gonna strip back um, just about five millimeters of wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it in there and strip it back. Yeah, maybe a little more than that. <laughs> just like that. Same thing on the other side. So I have both of them stripped just like that. So once we got that far and we got our wire stripped, we're gonna wanna take and just give them a little bit of a twist, just so they are kind of together, so they go in those terminals. Just a little bit of a twist, just like that. Then, we're gonna go ahead and put the red one on the inside here, and make sure all the wire goes in there, and take your, your flathead screwdriver and tighten that terminal down from the top. Just like that. Do the same thing for the negative or the black wire. We're gonna go ahead and make sure you are got a good uh, twist there. Just enough to get it in. Oops. And you gotta make sure that all the wire goes in there because any of the wire hanging out, if it touches that other side, it could short and that would be bad. With these 12 gauge silicone wires, they're pretty big too. So then once we got that pushed in, as you can see here, go ahead and tighten the top down, just like we did with the other one. Make sure they're tight, just like that. So that's what you have now. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and start putting it all back together. Um, I like to first start by pulling out my wires just a little bit more. And we'll be able to tell how much we need to once we get this back together. So go ahead and take your board and go ahead and start getting it back together like it should be. And you can start by, you know, they're, see these two wires are way too long. So we're going to have to pull them back like that. Just there we go. So they're much shorter in here. So once we get the back wires in the channel here, I turned my printer and I wanna put the two front bolts into the extrusion for the front plate here. So go ahead and line up those screws and get those started. And sometimes those are the tricky ones and just make sure you know, you're not pinching any wires or anything like that. So these are the two screws here. We're gonna go ahead and get them put back in. So once these two are tightened in, that'll actually help uh, straighten everything out. Then what we're gonna do is turn the printer sideways again 
and we're going to take the smaller uh, bolt that we took out and go ahead and put it back in here. So grab your Allen wrench and that should tighten right in just like that. And notice these are through and under this right in the cutout here. I actually printed this. It's a, on Thingiverse. I can put the link below. And that protects the wires from the, the sharp frame edges there. So now we're looking through the top and you can kind of see down in here, these are the new wires you put in. Red on the inside, black on the outside. And we're just gonna go ahead and put the top plate on now. So if you, here's the top plate. If you did take your fan out, go ahead and reconnect it now. It can only go in one way. So you would go ahead and push it in and make sure it's tight. And then the top plate will come on and sit in here just like this. And we'll go ahead and put the three screws back in now. Okay, so once you get all three of the bolts put back in the top, Let's go ahead and turn our printer around and we're almost done. All right, so I got the printer turned around and we have the long cable hanging out of the back. We know that's connected inside on the main board, right? So what we need to do is connect it to the power supply now. Now, without the XT60 connectors, we're gonna connect directly in and you won't be able to take these out or take your power supply off without pulling this apart and unscrewing them from the board, okay? So if we go in for a closer look on the power supply, we'll notice that our positive is in number three here. So one, two, three. And our negative is in number six. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six for the big power supplies in the standard Ender 3. That's also in a V plus and a V minus slot. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this up. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew the positive and the negative at this time. So go ahead and do that. And I like to make these pretty loose for our new wires that are coming in. So go ahead and make them pretty loose in there and pull those old connectors out. So the other thing we wanna do while we're in here is just go ahead and make sure all of your other connections here are screwed down tight. You don't want any of these to be loose. Uh, Tim found a bunch of loose ones on the TH3D live stream a couple days ago, and that's something that we need to get away from. So go ahead and get that done. We have number three and number six raised up, and we're going to move on to the next step. Next, we need to determine how long you want your new power wires. So I'm just going to go ahead, because I like to run mine like this in the extrusion, and just kind of guess that... I think about right there is gonna be perfect for me. So when I'm done with this, I'm actually gonna measure the old wires. If you guys wanna cut the uh, new wires to the same measurement, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure these are straight about where I've marked them. So I pulled them straight and I'm gonna go ahead and cut to about where I like them. Next thing we wanna do is go ahead and strip these wires like we did before. Same distance, so just like that. And you can use any wire stripper you want. I just prefer this style. Then what we need to do is feed it through the bottom here. And just like that. So I posted this video uh, last night and a couple of people asked me how come I didn't use these spade connectors or fork connectors when I connected my wires to the PSU. And I thought about that, and that's a great question. So I reached out to Tim from TH3D, and he said that I should be using those when I connect the wires to the PSU. So I'm re-editing this real quick. I'm gonna refilm it, and we're gonna make sure that we crimp these on and put them in there properly. So what you need is a crimping tool and a couple of fork connectors that fit your wire. And we're gonna go ahead and push the wire in and crimp them, and then we'll finish the video that way. So I went ahead and crimped these on, just like that. And you wanna make sure they're the right size. Uh, these are actually one size too small. They should be for 12 gauge wire, and these are not. But the problem I had was the ones that I got, uh, these right here, 
the yellow ones were actually 412 gauge wire, but they don't fit into the port here. So for demonstration purposes only, I'm actually gonna use these blue ones, and then I'm going to go ahead and order the correct ones and swap them out on mine. Just know that when you do yours, you wanna go ahead and use the spade terminals or the fork connectors, whatever you wanna call them, for the 12 gauge wire if that's what you order. So, with that being said, what we're gonna do is go ahead and feed our wire in, and we're gonna put them underneath the wires that are in here. And if you remember, number three here was our positive, and number six was our negative. And with these spade terminals on, they hold very good. So all you gotta do is go ahead and see if I can do it one-handed. Tighten these in. Just like that. We're gonna go ahead and flip down the little protective cover. And we're gonna go ahead and carefully put this back together. So you slide it up carefully and then you go ahead and replace the two screws that go in here. So now I have these two back in and we're ready to put our power supply back on the frame of the Ender 3 and we're gonna do that now. All right, you can see now that I have attached the power supply back on. Something to note when you're putting the power supply back on, be very careful because the metal is very thin in the back of this power supply and it will strip out if you're not careful. So we've gone ahead and turned the printer around. You can see the cables in the back here, they go straight in. No longer do we have the XT60 connectors. We can actually uh, cable these back up with a little bit of cable management and the little C-clips that I really like to print, and I'll go ahead and do that when the video's done. The next thing we need to do is plug this thing in and power it on and make sure everything works. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, we powered it back on, everything came up great. We didn't have any smoke, which is great. We went ahead and I'm preheating for PLA now, and we can see the temperatures rising on both, which is awesome. So I think we're good to go. We now have 12 gauge silicone wire, and no longer do we have those dangerous XT60 connectors. So there you have it. You've successfully replaced the wires going from the power supply all the way to the motherboard on your Ender 3. You got rid of those XT60 connectors forever, and you don't even have to worry about them anymore. I hope it went great. I hope you learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, if you liked the video, hit the like button below. Click the subscribe button if you wanna see more. And if you wanna be notified when the next great videos come out, click that little bell over there. Thank you so much for watching. Keep mashing that subscribe button. We're almost to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm doing a big giveaway.